Awesome. So good to have all of you here. Uh, sort of the, one of the things that we've seen over the last uh, few months here at Training for Warriors is what a critical factor in nutrition is, and not just nutrition, but precision around it, and being really, really clear with what you got to do to be able to get where you want to go. So, with that in mind, so uh, the purpose of this talk is to give a, um, a 10,000 foot overview on how to build muscle and burn fat. And the thermo, the laws of thermodynamics are pretty clear on both of them, um, are pretty consistent on uh, both ways. But we'll talk about what you need to do specifically in the next 30 days to burn fat or build muscle. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of math in here, but you are going to do your math on your sheets because you have your data in front of you. You've got how much muscle and fat you have. You've got your BMR, and you know how many times per week you're, you're training or you're exercising. And that's going to be that's going to have a lot to do with the the outcome. So. Um, I'm going to use an example of a human being. Are you okay with being the numbers yeah. example? Okay. All right. So, Viviana's in the challenge. Viviana wants to burn fat. And what's your BMR today? No, no commas. 445. Four, okay. So, uh, the BMR is your base metabolic rate. It's not about how big or tall you are, short or wide you are, it's about how much uh, muscle tissue you have in your body because muscle, muscle tissue takes calories to maintain. So the BMR, the BMR is based off of how much of you is lean tissue. It changes weekly, but we have the most current data from your in-body to make sure that you're accurate with that. So we got BMR. All right. Her goal is to burn fat. So we'll get to the deficit at the end, but we're going to start out with her actual daily demand. So uh, how many times a week are you working out, Viviana? Five. Five. Dang. All right. So Viviana, Viviana's multiplier is going to be about 1.5. I think it's like 1.47, but I hate math. What's the, who, so 50% more. So what, 700 calories extra? Okay. 2167. So, that's that's with the activity of Viviana's life. What do you do for? Are you working on the phone? Working? All right, desk jockey. Most of us are. So her day, if if she was a, a miner or a construction worker or where she's carrying you know lumber around, we would factor that in as well. So your for your job, you might you might have to up. Your, your multiplier, and I'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in the Q&A section. But right now, so with her activity, she's really burning, on average, on a weekly basis, 2167. So in order to, to lose a pound of fat per week, how many calories do you have to be under? Um, what's your deficit got to be weekly? 35. Look at this crowd. Highly educated here at Training for Warriors. So, and so on daily, you got to be what? If you're, if you're on plan, you're going to be 500 calories underneath every day. So 500 less is 1667. Um, to cut a pound of fat per week, Viviana needs to be at 1667 or less. So she's got a high water mark for her day. So what she's going to do is she's going to write out her meal plan ahead of time. Not not after she's eaten it, she's going to plan out her, her meals ahead of time and make sure she's going to do the math on my fitness pal or lose it or any one of these apps. And she's going to uh, verify that her meal plan gets her underneath her, uh, her, her goal. Does everybody make sense, like how we're getting there? So we're reverse engineering success, starting at the, e the end that we must have in order to succeed and working backwards. So she knows how many calories she needs. She's going to punch. The, uh, her food into uh, a, a tracker like MyFitnessPal or lose it. Who here has used a digital tracker to verify macros or anything like that? Dang! Highly, highly educated, very, very well practiced group here. Okay. So, with, with the, one of those digital tools, she can verify that her meal plan makes sense for her and then 
plan out those, me that, those meals seven days in advance. Now, let's say Viviana wants to go to happy hour with some coworkers that are in town and show them around Portland. Let's say that happens. What she does is she goes back to her calorie goal and she subtracts two beers and a cocktail. I'm going to be generous. <laughs> two, beers, two beers and a cocktail. And, uh, and so she's going to about 110 calories per beer, 220, and then a cocktail. Let's go ahead and say it's really simple and it's just an extra 100. So about 310 calories, 320 calories down. So on game night, she gets to go out, she's going to subtract 320 from her daily total and then plan out the food and figure out the portions to make sense that she's still under, cocktails included. Or on the flip side, she gives herself a break and says, I don't give a shit what my calories are. And I also accept that I'm not going to lose a pound a week on the plan. Right? Modify the goal, modify the process. So has anybody done this before? like map that outlet in this way? Okay. I'm going to go through the muscle. I, I think we're talking habits and like real life here, so we'll get into that in a second. But I want to just go to the other side. Who here is building muscle? Okay. Goals to build muscle. It's the same, but you want to be in a 450, 500 calorie surplus every week, right? The reason it has to be such a small and specific surplus is if you overshoot, if you overshoot, you're going to gain just as much fat as muscle. So yeah, drinking a gallon of milk will get you there, you know, don't worry about it. But if you don't care about what your body comp goals are, you're going you're gonna to just gain fat with the muscle as well. And a little bit of that is almost inevitable because you can't control when and where the body adds weight. But with about 400 to 500 calories of surplus, you'll consistently add half a pound of muscle about every seven to 10 days. Muscle is a little bit more demanding. Remember, as you add it, it's burning more calories, so your, your deficit needs to you know, kind of play up with it. So it's a little bit more challenging to monitor, but it, you can be consistent with that as long as you're, um, you've got a good plan and you're weighing in regularly, which all of you are. The thing, the reason why you can't bulk, like well, you, you could, but the reason why bodybuilding bulk cycles do not work for us humans is because the, the more fat you put on, every, every pound of fat, every percentage of body fat you gain reduces your insulin sensitivity, meaning the next pound of muscle is that much harder to get. So you really quickly run into diminishing returns. You gain two or three pounds of muscle and you just gain a bunch of fat because your body needs to adapt with you you need to adapt with it as you build muscle and, and keep and maintain that insulin sensitivity. The only time that those rules do not apply are when you're a beginner to weight training and you're just you're putting more weight on the bar every week just because you're a noob and your nervous system's adapting to that stress. Your bones, your ligament, everything is adapting to the, to the, the heightened stress of strength training. So even though you're you're uh, adding muscle, or you're going to be adding muscle at a, at a faster rate, and you're going to potentially burn body fat as you add muscle. Rarely do those two things meet. Only when you're experiencing a novel, ex a novel dose of higher volume training than what you were doing before. So if you're a training for warriors and you're Viviana, and you're five days a week, that's a pretty intense training schedule. Now, if she went and did two a days for two months, where she's doing nine workouts a week then she's going to be extremely like, high getting a high dose of volume and she might be in that place where she's both going to burn fat and build muscle simultaneously but usually it's one or the other 500 calories up 500 calories down the reason why we do not has anybody ever been on a diet where you're eating different amounts of calories at different days and different times okay that's hard to sustain because you really have to remember, if you miss your workout, your meals have to change, right? The, the aggregate method is more sustainable and it's pretty effective. The difference in, it, it, the compliance difference really nullifies the value of the cycle um, for most of us. If you're a really advanced athlete and nutrient timing is a big part of your training process, that might matter, but for most of us here, just having a weekly calorie schedule is easier mentally and practically to maintain. 
So that's why we don't time it differently during different workouts. Now we get to the part where I think we get to lose traction on the, on the ground for a second. Okay, so we've all made a plan. We've all mapped it out. What happens? What, what, what gets you derailed in the course of, you know, seven or 10 or 14 days of being on plan? What, what knocks you off? What are the common pitfalls? Anybody want to start us up? Life, a moment, okay. The weekend, not having Josh in front of me at that second to tell me to put the muffin down. Okay. I mean, I, I get you. I, would, I want to hang out with me all the time too. So the consistency factor, right? Uh, well, the best of the best of the best of the best of the best are off plan sometimes. Like it's not about being perfect, right? So um, I've, printed, I've taken the liberty of printing out an accountability sheet. This is not all of the things that go into account your success, but this is the majority of them, the majority of the big levers. What the persistent, what the gritty people do is you abandon the all or nothing thinking and you, you start tracking your actual habits to see what's working and what isn't. Like, um, I don't know if anybody ever pays attention to that board besides me, but did anybody see how many months I wrote sleep on there before I got it, before I figured it out? I just took it off. It took me three months to get to bed on time, so I consistently get to bed on time, right? I do this for a living, right? But that, that was such an impact, such a big impact for me and my mental health and my ability to stay on my plan. Like, I fought and I fought and I fought and I let go. No video games or phone calls. But no. I finally got it, right? I, I got, I'm in the habit now. The thing is, like some of you here are, are still on the six week challenge. Some of you just opted into the 30 day challenge. That's to get you focused. That's not to fix you. You don't need to be fixed. You have strengths, you have weaknesses. And if you want to play the long game, you're playing the pragmatic game of what am I doing now? What's the next best step for me? Like what, what can I do better this month than I, that I did last month. Now, Viviana is working out five days a week. She goes to bed at 7 p.m. So she's trying to crush the challenge in the first week. I love it. Um, but uh, the, the, the practical approach is to track your behavior, make your plan and track your behaviors over time. When, you, when the coworker comes in and brings cake, because it's always someone's birthday at the fucking office, like, like, and you eat the cake, you just scratch off the, the no cheat thing. That day, that's not the whole week or month that day. You could still get to bed on time. You still stay hydrated. You could still not drink. You could still do the other stuff. So it's, we got to expand our, per, our, our perspective on what our behaviors are that we are succeeding at. So it's like, hey, listen, you know, maybe I got a PR on squat day and got to bed on time, but shit, I forgot my meals at home. I didn't eat on plan all day today. Happens to me. So you, champions aren't the people that, I love the word champion. Because that's, that's special. But champions aren't people that never fall off the horse. They're just the ones that, that don't quit. They just keep getting back on the horse time and time again. Does that help a little bit with like what happens when you fall off the, the wagon? These sheets, um, we have them online. Well, we have them on Google Drive. You can print them out. You can track them yourself. If, you're, if you want to be gangster, you start holding yourself accountable. If you want to double down on being a gangster, you post that shit to the private group and be like, this is me. And you don't post it when you're perfect. You post it when you're not perfect, right? Like, yes, I love seeing everybody's broccoli photos, but I fucking know damn well it's, it's someone's birthday and someone's eating cake, right? So monitor yourself because when you start to show your work at mathematics, that's when you get better at math. Show your work and your process with yourself, right? Take that extra time and, and double down. This is how you do it, you know, at a, at a, high, at, at a high level and a sustainable level for a long period of time is you just track the process and every time you improve week to week, that matters. Like, okay, Josh got to sleep in. Now can Josh eat enough? Maybe, we'll see. Making smoothies, get those calories in there so you can build some muscle. Shame everybody, shame Coach Elizabeth. All right, so those are, those are habits, mindset. All right, let's talk about um, Q&A, obstacles, things that people are unclear about, things that get you hung up from Staying on a plan. So you're 
snacking on the job because you're bored. So one, like, I'm not against snacks. Put them in your plan, right? Like if you're, if you're trying to build muscle, map it out, see what you need, make, them, make sure they're the right ones. Because you have your BMR, you have how many times you're working out, you can do the math for what you need in terms of calories, right? So then you plant, you, you build those into your meal plan. So if you like cheese, almonds, fruit, those are sources of fat, lots of nice fiber, minerals. So put them in your plan. And so like, I'm gonna know I'm gonna have two handfuls of almonds, go put it in there. I'm gonna have some cheese, put it in there. Great. Then you, those are grams of fat. And so you're, you're put, punch them into your macro calculator for the whole day. And then they're just part of what you do. So it's not a bad thing. Leverage your habit for your benefit. Whoa, dang. Who here has ever made a mistake? The first time, like, you ever made a mistake that you thought was gonna get you, like, fired? Or someone killed? <laughs> or in Dave's case, because his finance, like, 100 people fired? <laughs> it's all right, right? Like, part of it is, the person that's most mad at you is usually you. Like, you're gonna make mistakes, right? And so like, man, I, I, was, uh, I was in the army and uh, I, w I took it so seriously. I took my job so seriously. And I remember the moment where I screwed up a mission. I'm like, mission, like the army screws things up all the time. But it's never my fault. But, but one time it was, and I was so terrified. And like for that second, I forgot that we screwed up every single mission we were ever, I mean like, Nothing ever went perfect, ever. But like, I forgot about that for a second, and I felt like I let 3,000 people down. America. America down. I let America down. <laughs> I, <laughs> right? That, that's the feeling, right? But like, you, you're, you're gonna break some dishes. And take, take disarming the, the emotional draw to that, because that's where the energy's really lost, right? It's like feeling like, it's, like it means something. It's like, um, anybody ever like say like, I'm gonna I'm not gonna drink for a month. Anybody ever do that? Just me. Okay, just me. All right, and then maybe two weeks into it you drink. Yeah. Okay. So like, life goes on. Life goes on. It's gonna be okay. Uh, but I think saying it out loud, for you know, it's like, like speaking like shit. I screwed this up, and just like then it's done. Then it's it's conscious, and then you can. Put the bag of donuts away. I don't know what your, what your, you know, how you, how you went off plan. Throw them in the garbage. Them in the garbage. <laughs> I was in therapy one time, and I had a, and an anger problem when I was younger. I would punch people in the face a lot, and yeah, just whack them. And it was because I couldn't express myself. And um, my therapist, oh man, he's just, just a great guy. I said, Am I ever not gonna want to? If I'm, am I ever gonna not wanna fight the world? And he was like, nah, probably always gonna wanna punch someone in the face. But at a certain point, your life will be so large that that voice is very small in comparison. Dang. That was some good coaching right there. Because look at the spreadsheet, right? Look at all of the things that impact your results. Your focus, your focus becomes your reality. So you're focusing on that one mistake, that one thing, it's gonna burn at you for days, days. Let that shit go. Uh, Ito was saying there's a difference between cheeseburger calories for 2,000 calories and uh, broccoli and chicken calories for 2,000 calories. Which is a good question. The short answer is yes, because the things that are in that cheeseburger, even if it's all organic, even if you're eating at a locally sourced whatever, um, the, the macro compilation of that is gonna change your metabolism. So aside from whatever else went into the burger or the, into the experience of eating it, um, it, it will have less of what you need than the broccoli and the chicken, and um, it will affect you. Technically, from a thermodynamic standpoint, it will, uh, it, it should, if you actually mapped it out, you're supposed to have the exact same weight loss or weight gain experience, regardless of the type of calories. It doesn't, in real life, it doesn't really map that way when you, when you look at long-term studies or even short-term studies, but in a barometric chamber, the hard part is, what is even a calorie? Because it gets, it gets tricky when you start to measure them in and out. It's like, 
If you feel shitty after eating it, it might be shitty. If you feel good after eating it, it might be good. Um, let's do let's do a dude. Don, you want to share your? Do you have your embody on you? All right. What's your BMR? BMR eighteen ten. How many times a week are you working out, Don? Two to three. Okay. One point three. There is a, a a chart with multipliers based on activity level, and um, I'll put the link on the private group. And I'll even maybe we'll email it out. Um, so everybody can see it and you can play with those number on activity. Uh, what if I worked out seven times a day or a week? 23, 53. Cool. Um, I only know the ones that are directly to correlate to what we do. So like I know what three times a week is. It's 1.3. Three to four is five times a week is 1.5. Seven days a week is 1.67. So I call it 1.7. The more you work out, the less effect it has. This is Don's um, demand. This is his TDE. And I'll, I'll put some stuff up here while we're just talking. Uh, total daily energy expenditure. So he needs to eat, to maintain, not, not change anything, he needs to eat 23.53. If he wants to build muscle, then he's gonna be at, on a daily, 28.53. I can add five. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is, this is gain. And then to lose, what's uh, 23.53 minus 500? This is daily calories. So he'll need to eat this to gain. He'll need to eat this to lose. There are people here who bike commutes to work. Adina, Kathy, <laughs> remember when you were going from Marine Drive? Yes, yeah, longer. How many, how many miles was that? Per 16, miles 16 miles a day, bike commuting, not including training. Yeah, her TDE was through the roof. Um, I just typed in TDE, uh, TDE on Google, and there's a whole calculator that comes up. And you could choose one to two, three to five, six to seven, and two times per. So it's not exactly per workout, they, the more you work out, the less of impact it has on your BMR. You'd have to plan to eat uh, a lot more <laughs> to gain. That's a thousand calorie difference. It's a huge difference between gaining and losing. I'll send an email link with a couple of different sites, the TDE calculator, which is really easy. And then there's a, a more complex formula for where you're at, your body fat percentage, your goals, and like trying to get a little bit more sciencey into it. Um, but the TDEs, I haven't seen it not be effective it's for, for whatever your goal is. The big piece is it's not, it's, it's like, it's labor intensive to like put in your food, right? And um, it's annoying to have to like plan out and map out. But if you're, once you do it a couple of times, it gets easier and easier and easier in terms of the reps. If you, you can, you can make more drastic cuts. But um, the, if you're making a drastic cut, you have to change your, you have to measure and change your diet faster because the harder the adjustment, the faster your body adapts and stops responding. So 500, 700 is pretty, like, pretty reasonable, but more than that, you're not gonna get awesome results for more than like a week. So it's important to continue, like, keep it sustainable, keep adapting your, your diet to what's happening to your body. So if you're trying to do both, you're gonna fail. So if, you're, if you want to build muscle, do that. If you wanna burn fat, do that. I always, I always choose on my own body to burn fat first because later on to build muscle, it's easier. The leaner you are, the more insulin sensitive, the more insulin sensitive, the easier it is to put on muscle. If you gain muscle first, you're gonna gain fat and that makes every pound harder to do. So leaning out is the easier road to, to do that first. I gained 5% body fat last month. So I'm like, shit, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna build a bunch of muscle now. So I had to start, we had to start eating right last month so I could be able to put on some muscle this month. You gotta play the long game. The muscle gain is gonna be harder when you have extra weight. So there's like, I mean, it's hard to say like exactly how much more difficult it'll be, but if you try to jump more than 500 calories, it's gonna be very difficult to add just muscle on your body. And the, the leaner you are, the more easily it'll come on. And like, it's kind of a qualitative thing. It depends on who you are and how well you add weight. When you gain muscle, so oh yeah, so this is somebody texting me this question. 
you, it is easier to keep weight off when you have more muscle because your, your base rate starts higher. So you, you're, uh, you're burning more calories at rest all the time. But the process of gaining muscle, you will gain fat. Almost inevitably evenly across the board, the leaner you are, the less fat that you gain as long as you're being conservative. So if like, if you take anybody and you add a thousand calories a day, you could do a gallon of milk a day or whatever, or anything crazy, you'll gain muscle. You're just going to gain as much fat as you gain muscle. And then every pound you're trying to add is going to be harder to add of muscle because you're becoming less insulin sensitive as you go. However, once you built the muscle, you're naturally at rest going to burn more calories. So it's easier to stay leaner when you're lean. The, the, the diet will make the difference. Correct. Right. So the training that we do in here, it's a great question. I love talking about training. So the, the TFW program, it's designed to, to prevent injury. It's designed to build strength, muscle, speed. It won't do that if your diet's shitty. It will do that if it isn't. But the point of the sheets are, the point of the philosophy is, it's not that you can never have cake or beer or that it's cheating. It's just, it's off plan. It's okay. Like life isn't about being perfect and on plan all the time, but it's don't sacrifice what you want now for what you want most. So continue to have a long-term vision per day. That's correct. So the deficit or the surplus should be no more than 500 per day. You'll feel better and you'll get better results. And those results will be more sustainable. So when, what if you, what if you do not eat and you work out? Uh, it's different for everybody. So, um, like, I have awful genes. So if I stop eating, my muscle wastes away. It's almost instant. It's like, uh, um, I lost 10 pounds in 10 days, and most of it was muscle. This was when I had oral surgery. It was the thing I was telling you about that. So, like, my body type does not preserve muscle. I'm real stressed. I don't know, whatever it is. I don't have a lot of testosterone. But there are people that you might have met they're like, doesn't really, like, they don't seem to ever eat. They seem to be in great shape. I've, I've seen people like that. It's not most of us. It's going to have an effect on you. It just depends on how your body re reacts, right? Is that how you usually eat? Are you usually sort of like that? Got to get more protein in. Got to build the muscle. Just force feed them. Can you do that to kids? I don't know. Good question. It depends on your, and who you are and what you're doing. But for me, it, does, it makes me feel terrible, and I, it, you can see it immediately. And nothing new, right? Same stuff. Long-term vision. Stick to the plan. Hold yourself accountable. Post on the group. Tell the group share, share with the group what you're doing. Insulin, in, in, intermittent fasting for increasing insulin sensitivity. IF increases insulin sensitivity because you're at a calorie deficit. Being in a calorie deficit increases your insulin sensitivity. When, you, uh, when you're not eating, muscles are growing hungrier. So the longer you spend at a calorie deficit, the more insulin sensitive they are. So uh, the cool thing about intermittent fasting is if you've ever done it, go like 16 hours without eating and then crush like a 16 ounce steak. <laughs> yeah, huh? it's gangster. I feel real good. Nice and balanced. Um, but, uh, but intermittent fasting, it generally, or I've done it, I did it for about four months. The, 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 the research is, it, it works like this. But if you net it out over the course of days and weeks, the person had a calorie deficit and ate less. They lost fat mostly. Sometimes they lose muscle, but mostly fat. And it works better with sedentary people because they're not, if you're not lifting, you're not, bur you're not d damaging those muscle fibers. You don't need as much protein to recover, things like that. Um, it is, there's a lot more, there's a lot fewer keto athletes. CrossFit's been really good about research for this because their paleo was kind of close to keto and they kind of made it full keto a few years ago and all the CrossFit athletes were doing it. What happened is they started to suck at life and they started to do keto, um, neo-keto training, which is they did carbs when they were training. So they did nutrient timing which is they would have more calories and carbs on days they were training, less on days they weren't. And they found out keto is awesome unless you're lifting weights and doing stuff all the time. So thank you CrossFit for doing a huge amount of data collection for us. And it depends on how you feel. 
I actually like fasting for mental reasons. Um, it makes me insane, so that's cool. Um, I like to fast on a Sunday if I'm not lifting when I'm doing mobility stuff. Um, I do it for one, because I eat a lot and it's nice to have a day where I'm not eating. And two, um, um, I believe it helps my insulin sensitivity too. So I think that's good. The, the big thing is, if it makes you feel good, you could do it and it doesn't sabotage the rest of your diet. If it makes you feel shitty or really, really hungry and it's hard to stay focused on your plan, then it's not for you. So like, if you like it and you're winning at it, awesome. But it's for the person. It's like, yeah, do, do what works. So I don't, I don't, I don't have a hard, a hard or strong opinion on it. I, I used to like it more than I like it now, but I still kind of like it. I haven't done it in a performance program. So that might be the tell. I'm kind of afraid to use it because I'm like, Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, you know what? Maybe I'll try it. But then again, that would just be Josh's population N of one. Calculate macros. Yeah. Oh, man. I wish Elizabeth was here. OK. Macro calculation. Does everybody know what their macros should be? You already know what they are? What are they? OK. Protein's 120. OK. Okay. Um, it, what's the percentages? Do you have them? Okay. Okay. Uh, 120 times 4, 480. And then 47 times 9, 423. All right. 692 plus 480 plus 423. All right. 1595. Uh, 1595. Oh. You had this one? What's the, we don't know the ratio? Oh, this is 43%? Okay. What are the other percentages, Miranda? So we're just, I'm just going to get the whole roadmap and then we'll talk about it. 30. 30, 30? 30. And then 30? Yeah, 60, yeah, that's about right. Okay. What are macros or nutrient facts if you've ever looked at some food? in the grocery, market, grocery store. Um, these are uh, macronutrients or energy substrates. Go ahead. This is 27. Okay. That's close enough. That's fine. Uh, so <clears throat> protein, fat, and carbohydrates are in where we get energy from. Protein is the, those are the nutrients that restore your muscles, help you recover from your physical training and any damage to um, your cellular structures in the body. Fat is a long-term energy source. It's good for brain health, heart health. Um, fat's broken up into unsaturated, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, and saturated fat. And you should have about an even distribution of a third of each of your calories should come from each of those categories of fat. And then carbohydrates is where you get energy, both to train and to recover from your training. So the more active you are, the more you're going to need carbohydrates. So if you've had kids and you're chasing them around all the time, you need carbs. So if you're training at Training for Warriors, you need carbs. Carbs are your immediate and medium term energy source for life. Pro uh, fat has the most, is the most energy density. Nine calories per grams of fat. Protein and carbs have four, four calories per gram, respectively. The difference in these, these percentages should be dictated towards your goals. So uh, the, if you're trying to build muscle, recover from training, more protein. Uh, if you're trying to burn more fat and be more satiated, control your, your appetite, essentially burning fat, uh, more fat as a ratio in terms of a percentage. And then uh, carbohydrates, the harder you train, the more you need. So if you're really aggressive, 50, 55% of your calories, if you're training six days a week, seven days a week, you're eating a lot, of, a lot of carbohydrates. The recipe book that we have online, and I, I know that we've rolled out a couple times, but not thoroughly, the recipe book has these macros already guided into it. They're fat loss macros, so it's not for it's not designed to help you build muscle. Go ahead. Oh, the macros aren't on there. 
Although it's it's color coded. It's like blue, green. Yeah. The 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 reason the macros are aren't on there is because you're gonna customize the portion size to you. So it's not gonna like the the recipe is like I think I'm thinking of like chicken and potatoes. There's a chicken sweet potato recipe. It's like six ounces of chicken. It's a lot of chicken. It's um th that's just a default. Like I I'd actually probably need six ounces. You might need maybe four ounces. So um, you're gonna go off of your macros and the ingredients that are in the recipe book. Is 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 this helpful? The um, like I really, really want to provide as much clarity and support as we can here at Trade for Warriors. If we did this like every month, I know y'all probably, you guys might not come to it every month, but would that be interesting to have like a monthly session about where we talk about food and stuff like that? Well, a couple, couple people are interested. Just from a coaching perspective, I like to have the, the continued message and the clarity. So we might post it up to something in uh, October and test it out and see how many people come to it. Because the big thing is, I'd li I like to get the same message out and give you more resources. And we'll be adding stuff to the Facebook page. If you're not on Facebook, we'll have it on Google Drive. But um, we'll be putting more re recipes up there, more tracking sheets, so that you can be really clear and consistent with yourself and then with your coaches. You can take that stuff to your nutrition meeting, and then you, you have something to talk about while you're getting results. <laughs> Yay. Am I in the frame? Because that's really what this is about. Yeah.